I've been taking underwater photography for you know, a, a few years, um, and I realized you, you weren't really going to be able to make much of a difference with that kind of imagery. Uh, you couldn't capture these environments in a really, truly engaging way. And then I just started watching Google mapping forests, mapping deserts and all over the place. I thought, well, why don't we do that underwater? Before I'd learned to scuba dive, I'd read the books, seen the pictures, but it's, it's no comparison to when you actually jump underwater for the first time. And it's a magical experience, and well, it's my favorite place. When I became an underwater photographer, one of my favorite creatures was this weedy sea dragon. And then suddenly, almost overnight, it disappeared, and no one seemed to notice or care. The first time I used a camera underwater was just after I'd given up advertising. Um, I'd suddenly walked out of a meeting, bought a camera, booked a trip, and on my very first dive, I went down to about 30 meters, came across this giant fish called VW, and took a couple of shots, and he took a dislike to me and suddenly rammed me with his big fat lips, smashed my mask, and I thought, okay, this is my new career. The camera technology at that time was getting better, but you'd only have 36 shots on a dive. Then you'd be trying to process your film while you're rolling about in open seas. Then digital came along and it made it an awful lot easier. This is a typical sort of professional underwater camera. They're great pieces of kit. You put your SLR camera inside and you can go on expeditions and, and you know all it takes is a few grains of sand on the O-ring and suddenly you've got the water level going up, which is your heart sinks. So I figured we need to work on a different scale. We need to be able to reveal these environments and showcase them to the masses. We had to build something a lot more complex. So we got this, this team that was building military scooters over in Seattle called Divex to help us with the housing. And then we got a specialist team called Panedia, who was brilliant at taking 360 images, but they'd never done it underwater. One of the biggest challenges was we had to have three cameras with extreme wide angle lenses that were all synced together. And we had to be able to control the ISO and the speed. So we had to have a tablet in an underwater housing controlling that all together. The first one we actually built didn't work. The second one we built worked like a dream. The SV2 camera carried out the largest ever global survey of coral reefs, well over a million images in 28 different countries. And with 360, you can capture reef landscapes. You're looking for the sharks swimming above you. You're looking for weird creatures on the seafloor. And it's, you're just surrounded by life and you feel you're underwater. And it's these images which are so important for being able to reveal these environments to people on a massive scale. When we launched Google Street View, with our first imagery, more people went virtual diving on that site than have ever been diving in history, and that was within the first week. I've been fortunate enough to see some of the most amazing sites underwater, but it was really talking to the scientists that told you about the issues that made us suddenly want to reveal the places that aren't faring well. We thought, everyone should see this. The trouble is no one does. I mean, very few people dive. That's why we teamed up with Adobe Stock. Adobe Stock allows us to get out to a whole new audience and also engage the creative community that can make a massive difference in communicating these issues. The images that we've taken, we have been making them available on Adobe Stock. And the best thing about these 360s is they, they look just stunning as rectangular panoramas. My favorite image in Adobe Stock was actually uh, an image of a bleaching reef. And it was of my friend Andrew swimming over the reef and suddenly to see him appear in publications all around the world um, from this single shot was just mind blowing. And it was the image that made me realize the power of being able to engage a mass audience through imagery. We often get asked the question, why should I care about coral reefs disappearing? A quarter of all marine life relies on coral reefs. 
Half a billion people rely on coral reefs for food and income, and they're worth something like 375 billion to the global economy, protecting coastlines all around the world. We cannot set the precedent of letting an ecosystem disappear without action. In the next video, we're going to take you behind the scenes of Chasing Coral to tell you the sort of the backstory uh, and to show you some of the images which became so almost pivotal in that movie for engaging people with these underwater issues at a massive scale. <laughs>